Hey toy fans, Rob here. Back with a brand new video for you guys, I guess. I'm just kind of firing from the hip on this one. Um, it's been a long time since I've had any regular content and I just kind of had the itch, you know, to just get out there and do a video again. So this is me uh, showing up after almost a year of absence, if we don't count my recent collection video, and just talking to you guys, you know, uh, the other collectors out there on YouTube that like talking about their collection of action figures or just whatever else is going on. Uh, so what's new with me? Um, well, I just had a uh, commercial. I make commercials for a living. I just had a commercial go national, which was kind of a big deal for me, so I was pretty excited about that. Um, I've been doing commercials for four years, which explains my lack of content on this channel. It just became really hard to do commercials and video editing uh, during the day and then come home and do it all again, you know, for several more hours. But uh, I'm in a good place now and, uh, you know, just kind of taking uh, video work at uh, my own pace, I guess, in my free time. But uh, uh, I, I was listening to uh, the Infinity Equation podcast recently and uh, they had the guest, one of their, their guests this week was uh, Dan Hu, and he was kind of talking about how the whole reason he does what he does is because of the passion of, um, you know, collecting and wanting to be part of that community. And that's something that I absolutely loved uh, getting into when I was more regularly doing tour reviews, when I met people, um, all sorts of people online, whether it be Craig or Glenn or Rectangular or Tommy, um, Dan from Toy Galaxy, all these people that um, I still, on some level, communicate with. Uh, some more than others, uh, some more intricately than others, I guess I used to say at this point. But it was still a really cool feeling to be kind of, you know, part of that family of people out there online sharing their passion for toys and collectibles. And I, you know, I've kind of lost that a little bit. Not the passion part, but um, I don't know. I almost feel like the world's still there but I'm just kind of adjacent to it. And I still like checking in all the time. I'm still collecting, as you can see from behind me. But I don't know, I just, I've, I've kind of gotten away from that a little bit. And I don't know if this is gonna be a regular thing. Um, probably not, to be honest. But I would like to be at least checking with you guys a little more frequently and just kind of keep talking about figures and, and things like that. So um, while we're just rolling off the cuff, uh, and we're talking about passion, uh, let's talk about those uh, brand new X-Men movie Marvel Legends figures that were just shown off. Um, if you guys remember from back in the day, um, I am a big fan of the X-Men brand in general, and it was a, a pivotal moment for young, uh, young Rob when uh, the first X-Men movie came out. Um, it was a really big deal to me. Um, I was one of those kids who I uh, didn't have the great, greatest experience in school. You know, I got made fun of all the time for being into comics or other things in geek culture. I grew up in rural uh, Missouri for the most part, so it was basically if you weren't into sports, you were a loser. <laughs> and so um, growing up watching those cartoons on Fox, reading the comic books, being fans of the characters, and then seeing a movie like X-Men showing up in theaters was a huge deal for me. Um, I didn't have parents that took me to the movies regularly. I've mentioned that in the past. Um, and... When X-Men came out, I was excited at the same time I was kind of let down because I didn't think I'd be able to go. And I had a friend who actually walked me over a mile to get to the first movie, um, which was a big deal when you're 15 and uh, don't have a car. Uh, he walked with me over a mile to get to the closest movie theater and paid for my ticket so we could go see uh, the first X-Men movie. And it was really awesome for me back in 2000. Uh, thank you, Daniel, uh, for doing that for me. And, um, you know, I was there when the initial teaser image for X2 came out with that sort of two on the closed, like, danger room doors. Um, when we saw that the film was going to be called X2, I was there when Halle Berry uh, announced that she was done with superhero films after doing X-Men 2 and that she doesn't need that franchise anymore. And then she went and made Catwoman, and that was a horrible uh, piece of cinema. And then she came running right back to X-Men 3 and begged Brett Ratner to let her be the lead X-Men in this film, and he capitulated. Um, I was there when Wolverine, or I, I was there rather when X-Men Origins Wolverine was leaked online. Everybody was watching it with unfinished effects before it came out in theaters. Uh, when Hugh Jackman showed up at Comic-Con, uh, I was there online uh, as he surprised everybody with the first trailer for the movie. I was there when that first trailer for X-Men First Class played that showed just Xavier's chair and Magneto's helmet. 
I mean, the whole way through. I've, I, it was, it's been a, a great uh, thing as a fan to be a part of. So all that to say, I'm super passionate about the X-Men films. I know there are some bad ones. I know there are some good ones. Um, but when these X-Men Marvel Legends figures were announced, it was something I was really excited about. It's like, man, you know, Toy Biz had some pretty decent figures for X2, less so for the first film and the third film they didn't even get a real shot because Hasbro bought the brand from Toy Biz at that point. And, you know, this was kind of like the first real swing, I guess, at Marvel Legends. I mean, again, X2 was, was pretty decent. Excuse me, but um, as we come forward and we see, you know, where Marvel Legends are now, these figures that Hasbro announced should have been the figures for somebody like me, somebody who's done retrospectives and all the collections. When I talked about that TV guide I got for the first movie, I am the direct audience for these X-Men movie figures. You know, I'm crazy enough to have bought the films all on DVD and Blu-ray. I mean, I'm that, I'm that guy. Like, I should buy everything. So when these figures came out, I was, or when they got announced, rather, I was super excited. And I saw the toy for images. And I was a little puzzled, and now we've seen the solicitations and they're available, available for pre-order. And I'm sitting here without a single one pre-ordered. And that's kind of a problem for me. And it, I, just, I want to talk about why it is that I think Hasbro, when they finally were allowed to make X-Men movie figures again, why they kind of dropped the ball on it a little bit. Um, let's start by taking a look at that Mystique figure that was announced. Uh, Mystique, if you guys are unaware, um, there was, this is not the first time, not counting the Toy Biz days, this is not the first time that we almost got a 6 inch or a 7 inch scale movie Mystique figure. Diamond Select Toys solicited around the time of X-Men Days of Future Past uh, a figure of the Jennifer Lawrence version of Mystique with a White House display room sort of uh, display base, which was a pretty cool idea. Uh, that figure was shown off at uh, Toy Biz or San Diego Comic Con of that year. And it had that tag, pending licensor approval. And Zach Oat was even saying um, that, you know, this is what we're showing off. Uh, we're not sure it's going to go into production yet. We're still waiting for approval. And apparently they never got the approval. And at the time, I had kind of wondered, well, was it Disney saying they didn't want it? Or was it Jennifer Lawrence's reputation? Rep excuse me. Was it Jennifer Lawrence's uh, representation saying that they didn't want that figure out there? Or was it Jennifer Lawrence herself? Uh, by the time the Days of Future Past had come around, she had already been kind of complaining about the makeup process that Re Rebecca Romaine went through three movies for. Uh, she was already on her, on her second film saying that it was really awful and complaining about the toxins in the paint. Um, and, you know, just kind of basically either working the crowd publicly to get better pay for the films or just really regretting that she was ever part of them now that she had the Hunger Games movies. And that Mystique figure uh, never released. And I always thought that was really weird. Um, I always kind of wondered, was it Disney, was it uh, Lawrence? But here we are, a new Mystique has been revealed, and it's Rebecca Romaine, which is fine, but there's no Mystique, or no Jennifer Lawrence ultimate head, alternate head. And I think that kind of, we can surmise that it wasn't Disney preventing that figure from coming out. Uh, for some reason, she just doesn't want to uh, let her likeness go. So it's a bummer that that's not part of that Mystique figure, um, even though I think between the two Mystiques, Rebecca's still my favorite. She's if. Any Mystique in the films can be linked to being more movie accurate, or rather more comic accurate. It's definitely uh, the Rebecca Romaine version of the character. Uh, so it is kind of a bummer that the Lawrence head wasn't there, but then what we do get with this figure is a trans, a, a human, like a, a bare human arm. And I'm not really sure what the point of that arm is. If we're making figures for a bygone era of films at this point, and we're, you want to make the definitive version of those figures, right? Um, you think about those WWE Mattel defining moments uh, wrestling figures where they, at least in theory, said that they were trying to create the definitive version of these different wrestlers from different events, even though a lot of times they were cutting corners and not quite nailing it. Um, I was kind of hoping that these X-Men figures would be that, and this Mystique is not that. Um, as far as her transformation effect goes, the arm doesn't make sense to me. Um, what I would have preferred is, you know, if, if you can't give her... I don't know, it would be weird to give her just a wolverine leg or something, right? Or like a wolverine arm with the claws extended. It just it would look weird attached to her, um, even though it would make more sense than a bare arm. Um, I wonder why they didn't just give her a Sean Ashmore head, an Iceman head from the first film, and kind of allow you to recreate that moment where Mystique sneaks into Cerebro. Um, I don't know if there's an issue with Sean Ashmore not wanting his likeness out there, but 
To me, it would have made more sense if they had just created an alternate head for that Mystique figure, and then maybe you put like a collar piece, or maybe goes on the chest a little bit that shows like the uh, scales peeling back, uh, to kind of uh, recreate that moment when Mystique was attempting to get in the, into Cerebro. So, uh, missed opportunity, I guess, number one there on that Mystique figure for me. Uh, then we look at the uh, Xavier and Magneto 2 pack. This is one where, again, it could have been really cool, but we look at the figures that we have in the two pack, and you've got Magneto, who's supposed to be from Days of the Future Past, but his costume colors are wrong. And I don't know if it's based on concept art or some other reference material, but if you watch the movie, Magneto has a maroon armored sort of plating uh, design aesthetic to the upper uh, torso of his costume. And when you look at the figure, it's more of a bronzes color, which is just weird to me. I don't know why they would do that. Even if that's what the, the previous stuff looked like, or if that's what the actual costume on set was, that is not how the costume looked in the final film. You'd think that then on the figure, after all these years, they would get that correct, but they didn't. And then instead of, you know, offering us an Ian McKellen Magneto somewhere else, which I still expect them to do at this point, but maybe they won't, I don't know. Uh, we get those two Ian McKellen heads, one helmeted and one non-helmeted. And to me, I can't, as a fan of the movies, again, for, for better or worse, as a fan of the movies, it doesn't sit right with me that we're expected to put a McKellen head on Fassbender's body when McKellen never wore that version of the Magneto costume. So that was just a weird choice to me uh, as well. I don't know why they couldn't have done something different, um, more accessories, I don't know what. Something other than uh, including alternate heads when the, the proper body's not there. And then we look at the Xavier. Uh, the Xavier has a blue suit like Patrick Stewart would wear. Um, I think McAvoy wore a blue suit in Apocalypse. I'd have to double check. Uh, but when you look at the, this set, it's definitely meant to evoke Days of Future Past and Apocalypse, I guess. I don't know. It's Days of Future Past Magneto. But when you look at Xavier, he's bald. So I guess that's Apocalypse Xavier. Um, but that doesn't explain the wheelchair that he's got then. Um, Xavier only used that sort of... Um, standard foldable collapsible wheelchair at the end of Days of Future Past uh, when they were at the White House. And it was only because um, I guess they were trying to hide who they were. Um, so Wolverine had something to push them around in. I don't know. But they show, established in Days of Future Past that he had the chair from the first three films. Uh, but then they used that collapsible wheelchair. I wonder if Hasbro did that because they're looking forward and thinking maybe they can reuse that wheelchair accessory somewhere else. But still, it was an odd inclusion uh, in this two-pack, I think. Um, and then we take a look at uh, the Wolverine figure. Uh, the Wolverine figure, I think, looks great, but it's not the Wolverine that everyone keeps claiming it is. Um, a lot of people were looking at this Wolverine figure and thinking, oh, that's Logan, you know, from the first film when he was just running around in his leather jacket. Uh, it is actually, if you compare images or just know the movies well enough, um, that is actually Wolverine from X-Men Origins Wolverine. If you look at him, his jacket is the wrong color. It was more brown in Origins than it was in the first X-Men film, and I don't know if color grading fixed that or whatever, but the jacket was much blacker, um, much darker in the first film. Uh, in the first film, Wolverine had a jean jacket underneath his leather jacket because Hugh Jackman uh, said he could get ready in three months, or excuse me, three weeks. He said he could buff up for the role, and he just didn't have the time. So they kind of gave him that jean jacket underneath his leather jacket to kind of uh, uh, bulk out the character. And the hair is longer, too. Uh, so when you look at that figure, it is an Origins Wolverine figure. Now, granted, size-wise, um, that is a better-looking version of Wolverine, I think. Hugh Jackman, at that point in his career, did sort of fill the role out more than he did in the first film. But I find it interesting that uh, we don't have any figures, I guess except for Mystique, we don't really have any figures from the first X-Men film when we're supposed to be celebrating 20 years of X-Men. So I just kind of wonder why Hasbro went that direction. Um, I know a lot of us were expecting, and it may still happen, for an X-Men movie four pack to get announced, uh, possibly next week at Comic-Con. But I don't know why when you show off these figures and you try to get people excited and you say it's 20 years of X-Men, and you even tease, we're putting up pre-orders on July 14th, the to the date 20 year anniversary of these figures, why not lead with your most nostalgic, with your best foot forward? Why not have figures actually from the first movie available for pre-order on the 14th? I don't get that. And when we see things like McKellen heads being included in the two-pack uh, with the wrong body, it almost makes you wonder if we're not getting a McKellen figure anywhere else in this line. If they did that thinking 
Well, we're not going to be able to get to Magneto, and his costume is really kind of boring in the first two films, because really, what is it? It's sort of a faux Nazi, not really, uh, soldier outfit uh, with a cape. Uh, there's nothing kind of exciting about it, um, like we see in the later films, where it's over-designed in Apocalypse, and where it's just that sort of weird armor plating design in First Class. I don't know, I just kind of wonder where Hasbro's head is at, and it makes me wonder when I should have been the target audience, and I should have been super excited to pre-order anything, I'm sitting back now looking at these figures going, do I really want these? This, you know, I don't know what they were thinking there. So I guess I wanted to share my, th my thoughts on that. So now I've done that. Okay, so I'm making an edit here. I started talking about the Apocalypse uh, HasLab project, which I think, I'll just say this. It's an amazing looking figure. I think it's awesome that it comes with Bastion. I think it's awesome that there's a female Sentinel. And I really hope that if they tell us a new uh, 10,000 tier unlock or something at Comic-Con next week, that they tell us there's more than a blast effect and another tentacle uh, for all the people that got out there and supported it. I'd really like to see something really, really cool included with that. I don't think it's going to be a morph figure. Um, only reason I say that is that as I've sat back and watched Hasbro and how they've handled animated projects to this point, they really seem to love treading on our, everyone's nostalgia for the old cartoons. But in opportunities when they could have made things more cartoon accurate, they've kind of skipped on that point. Uh, if you look at characters like the retro, retro carded Storm, right? A lot of people picked up the White Storm thinking, oh, I can finally complete my X-Men animated series lineup. But that Storm doesn't have bare hands. She's got gloves like she did in the comics. Um, if we look at the retro carded Spider-Man series, the card art for those figures looked a lot like the Spider-Man the Animated Series card art. But none of the figures in that wave, you could kind of sort of argue Goblin, but even his glider should have been purple instead of silver. Um, none of the figures in that wave actually come from the animated series. So I'm not sure what the deal is there with Hasbro. And if you would think there wouldn't be any rights issues with the animated series, maybe it's a separate license. I don't know. It's all in-house at Disney at this point, at least all of the animated stuff, except for uh, like Spectacular Spider-Man and Spider-Man, the new animated series, that CG MTV cartoon. That stuff's still with Sony, but... I don't know why it would be difficult for Hasbro to get access to licensing or rights for those animated projects, but it definitely seems like they're kind of avoiding it. Uh, again, if we see a Firestar figure finally come out, I suspect none of the packaging will reference Spider-Man and his amazing friends. It'll just be like, here you go, Marvel Legends Firestar, or it may not even have the X-Men logo on there. It might just say Avengers, it might just say Marvel Legends, I don't know, but it's not going to say Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Uh, but, you know, uh, Firestar did actually wear that costume in the comics, so we can always say, put it with an Iceman, put it with a Spider-Man, we've got our Spider-Man and his amazing friends. So I, I at least look forward to that avenue. Um, but as far as the Sentinel goes, I want something really cool for the 10,000 tier. Um, I think the fans have earned it for supporting this thing, which for me is way too expensive, and I know that I'm in the minority there, but I'm also somebody who doesn't regularly buy hot toys, and I'm somebody who has enough trouble keeping up with Legends uh, when they're releasing almost a wave a month plus two pack figures plus three pack figures plus legendary rider figures and then the the comic-con box sets like if if hellfire club gets announced uh i'm gonna find some way to pay for that but like we get all of these things piled up on top of each other in a year and then we ha with haslab we're expected to ask for an additional 350. again while i don't think the sentinel actually cost that much to go into production uh and i even with shipping i don't think it costs that much um I, I get why they're doing it. I get that it's a uh, crowdfunded project. Um, it's just, it's unfortunately going to be something I think that I have to pass on. Um, I'm tangenting even more now. Okay, things are getting messy again, but that's kind of my thoughts on that and the animated series figures. If you guys have noticed that, how um, it seems unlikely that we'll get a morph because of the way they treated other animated aspects of Marvel Comics history. Um, remember... Morph was never in the comics. I know there's a lot of people out there that get Morph and want to put him with their figures, and they think, oh yeah, Morph's 90s characters. Not really. Um, there was a character named Changeling in the comics from way back, that if you check out some art uh, of the way he looked back in the day, he kind of resembles the way Morph was drawn in the 90s series, but Morph and Changeling are two different characters, and then there's Morph from AOA that's, again, completely different from the Morph that was on the 90s cartoon. So I just, I don't know if Hasbro would ever give us a morph, but I also don't know why they wouldn't give us a morph in the same sense that I don't know why they're seeming to ignore other animated series uh, related items. But again, Sentinel looks great. Prime female Sentinel looks great. Bastion looks great. I wish I could have them. I'm so happy for everybody who is pre-ordering them. 
I hope you guys enjoy the heck out of these things because they look incredible. They really, truly do. Um, but uh, I guess ending on a positive note, I can talk about some pickups I got recently. Um, the Alpha Flight box set, which I was kind of wondering if I'd ever be able to get, uh, was dropped to about $65 on Amazon recently, so I was able to pick that up. Super excited to have that, and I've already placed those figures with my Wolverine shelf. Also recently, um, I picked up Genis Vell finally, uh, so I've added him to my Cosmic shelf. These are all updates since the last collection video that I did. And um, through work, I got rewarded an Amazon gift card, which is really cool, and I didn't expect that to happen. So I immediately went out and cleaned up the rest of the Demo Goblin wave. So I've got that coming in on Monday. Super excited to have all those together, mostly for the Demo Goblin, but, um, you know, White Rabbit I didn't have yet, so that'll be fun to add to my Spider-Man shelf. And uh, now that I've got Demo Goblin and Red Goblin and Hob both Hobgoblins and Green Goblin, uh, maybe I'll try to do something with my shelf display there. So, uh, guys, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for rolling with me as I just kind of spitballed all of this. You know, I didn't have any note cards. I'd, I'd been kind of thinking in my head about what I wanted to talk about, but now it just kind of came out there as messy as it might have been. Uh, let me know you, your thoughts, guys, on the X-Men movie figures. Are you excited? If so, that's totally cool. If you're not, that's cool, too. Um, but feel free to discuss with me down below either way uh, what your thoughts on that are. What are your thoughts on the Haves Lab Simpsonal? Do you guys have one pre-ordered? Are you excited? Um, and let me know about any recent pickups you guys have had. Uh, and maybe I'll do one of these again sometime in the future. Uh, maybe not in the immediate future, but maybe again if you guys like this sort of format of me just kind of sitting with you and talking with you about what's on my mind. Uh, and the, this time anyway, in the uh, Marvel Legends action figure side of things. So thanks for joining me guys. Uh, maybe next time I do one of these, maybe I can actually open something on camera with you guys so we can see what it's all about. Uh, but until then, thanks for watching. Catch me on Twitter at D21Beast and Instagram. I'm happy to talk to you guys there as well. And I'll uh, see you next time.